Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, I'm Andy Sykes, and welcome to a little video that I've made about whether Flash is dead. So, here's a generic person. You might be thinking that, hey man, Flash is totally dead. Get with the 90s. Well, let me just discuss why I've got a vested interest in Flash. First off, I'm not employed or sponsored in any way by Adobe. So I'd just like to give you some insight into why I'm pro Flash. I've been using it since about 2000. It's great for doing 2D hand-drawn animation. I teach using Flash, but I also teach other programs like After Effects and Illustrator. And I work commercially creating animated content in Flash, as well as other animation programs. So let's explore why some people think that Flash is dead. So when the iPhone came out back in 2007, 2008, Steve Jobs decided not to support Flash Player. This meant that there were no Flash animations or Flash games on what became the world's biggest mobile platform, iOS. However, it was still available on Windows and Mac and Linux desktops and laptops, as well as Android phones. The reason Steve Jobs and Apple decided to dump Flash Player was that they considered it to be laggy and resource hogging. It didn't get updated fast enough, and that was because Apple had to depend on Adobe updating it. The software wasn't open source, so they couldn't do it themselves. So they basically had to wait until Adobe deemed it time to update the player and address any of the issues it might be having with iOS. So just to clarify something, which I think confuses a lot of people and leads to people thinking that Flash is dead, is that there's actually two different programs that you could refer to as Flash. There's Adobe Flash Professional and Adobe Flash Player. And it's Adobe Flash Player that people think is dying out. And I'm going to explain what the difference between the two is now. So Adobe Flash Professional is a piece of animation and interactivity software that runs on Mac and Windows. It's still popular as a content creation tool, and it's used a lot in industry still. And it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. So it's quite an expensive piece of software that you now get as part of Adobe's Creative Cloud as a subscription. But in the past, you know, it would cost about $500, £500 pounds, uh, if you bought it by itself. Whereas Adobe Flash Player is a free plugin for your web browser. So if you've got Chrome or Safari or Firefox or Internet Explorer, <clears throat> You can download it for free and it enables you to watch Flash content in your browser. And it's this that's under threat from HTML5 and WebGL, but it's still widely used. It's definitely not dead yet. And it's this Adobe Flash Player that isn't supported on the iPhone and the iPad. So Adobe Flash Player is just a plugin. It's a really small program that works exclusively in your web browser. So things that have irritated people about Flash Pro, prior to CC, it could be very buggy and tended to crash a lot. There wasn't much development in the animation tools, particularly since Adobe took it on. They had introduced buggy features like the bone tool, which they've now removed. There was no way of exporting to video, so animators like myself got quite frustrated trying lots of long-winded ways of doing that. And there was no prior to a couple of years ago, export to HTML5, which is currently becoming the most popular way of creating interactive, rich content websites. So in the past, Flash Professional only exported really to Flash Player files. You can make things like projector files too, but essentially Flash Professional output Flash Player files. But over the years, that's changed. Recently, in the last couple of years, you've had the addition of HTML5 and WebGL. So Flash exports those really well now. I've made some HTML5 animations in Flash for commercial clients, and they seemed very pleased with them. They worked well. My developer friends said that the code was much better than they expected and didn't need too much editing. 
There's Adobe Air, which has been around for a while. That's another Adobe format, but it's great for making apps straight from Flash for iOS and Android. And you can also export to lots of different video formats from Flash using the Adobe Media Encoder to make AVs, MOV files, and H.264, etc. And also, if you've made any animation in ActionScript, so say if you'd scripted some snow or some rain, that will also be exported now. So not only does it export animation, but it'll also export scripted animation too. So that means if you're using Flash, it's a really versatile application. You can make stuff for iPad and iPhone. You can export video for the TV and broadcast YouTube. You can make content for Windows and Mac, the web, Windows Phone, Android. So there's lots and lots of different choices of exporting that you can get from Flash, which I think makes it a worthwhile and contemporary program to be using. So things that have improved recently, as I mentioned, last couple of years you've had HTML5 export, and more recently you've been able to write JavaScript straight into Flash rather than having to use comments and action script. There's the video export, which I've gone on about quite extensively. There's WebGL export, and you can also write JavaScript straight into that. There's things like variable width strokes that are now in Flash. You may have used them before in Illustrator. And they're animatable as well, which brings it more into parity with things like Toon Boom. And the sprite sheets. So if you're making animations for games, it's really easy to just spit out a sprite sheet and send that along to the game programs. So there's lots of other animation software out there, so I thought I'd just do a compare and contrast very quickly. Adobe have made a new piece of software in the last few years called Adobe Edge Animate. The pros are that it's really good for making simple HTML5 animations. That's all it does. It just makes HTML5 animations. It's good for responsive, kind of scalable websites, and it's great for HTML5. The cons, on the other hand, it's not very well developed yet, in my opinion. It's not been around that long. There's no drawing tools, so you can't create graphics within the application. So if you're doing animation, if you're wanting to make it complicated in any way or make it look interesting, you'd have to import illustrations from something like Illustrator. And you can't do nested animation, so things like loops aren't currently possible. I'm sure these things will change, but I can only describe it at the stage it is now. Toon Boom Animate's been around for a while. It's great for broadcast animation. It has more sophisticated drawing tools than early versions of Flash. In fact, there's still some drawing tools in Toon Boom that are a lot better than those in Flash. And it has a camera which has Z depth in it, or Z depth if you're American. Uh, which enables you to do 2.5D animation. So you can put lots of 2D elements on different 3D planes and zoom the camera through them. Flash does not have that at the moment, and lots of animators would really like it if it did. Currently, I have to use After Effects to do any 3D stuff using my content from Flash. The cons are that the drawings have to be rendered for you to see them properly, which I personally find a bit difficult because it's harder to see what you're doing. It's not updated as often as Flash. I found it confusing to use at first coming from Flash, but if you've never used any software before, it might make perfect sense. And also if you come from a traditional background, it might make a lot more sense. That was just my impression of it. It's got a smaller user base, so there's fewer tutorials and support than throughout Flash, and you can't do any interactive content. So if you are making animated elements for a game or an interactive website, you wouldn't then be able to write some code into Toon Boom Animate and create those interactions within that program. You'd have to export them as an SWF and import them into Flash or as an image sequence. And so it doesn't have the same versatility that Flash does. It's very much for broadcast animation. So Tumult Hype is a relatively new piece of software. It's fast and it's easy to use. 
It writes the code for you. It's great for scalable websites. You can type your own CSS and all kinds of stuff into it. And really, it's mainly for making websites with a bit of animation in them. And it's also a lot more affordable than Flash. It's really quite inexpensive. So it's very popular with my students. They're quite keen on it. The cons, it's only available for Mac. It makes large file size websites. If you're doing quite a rich interactive site, it ends up being about 30 megabytes, which is no good if somebody's on a 3G connection on their phone, for example. My developer friends say that it produces quite bloated code. It's got no drawing tools and no nested animation at the moment, although I hear in version three, they're bringing in nested animation. There's other animation software out there that I haven't really used. Anime Studio and TV Paint being two main examples. So why do I think that Flash still has a long life ahead of it? It's had lots of new development recently. We've had new features about every three months. And those have actually been useful features like variable width strokes and video export. There's a huge user base. Once you get over the initial learning curve, it's easy to use. I think it's the most versatile product of its kind on the market because you can do animation and interactive stuff in it really well. And you can output both to video and to web formats. And you can use it seamlessly with Illustrator and After Effects. Which means that if you're already in the Adobe suite, it's definitely the best thing to use, in my opinion. Again, not employed or sponsored by Adobe in any way. This is just my opinion. Perhaps I've been brainwashed. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. I'd really like to hear what you think about this subject. Perhaps you really disagree with me and you think that I'm wrong. Hit me up in the comments section below and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.